I am John Heller, Director of Product Marketing at Parts Tech, and we are excited to be a partner of Amplify 2024, powered by AutoLeap. So together, AutoLeap and Parts Tech are revolutionizing how auto shops order parts and tires. We are a free parts lookup integration within AutoLeap. We make it fast and easy for auto repair shops to find the right parts and tires, since that's our main topic of discussion right now, across all of your suppliers in a single search. Shops utilizing Parts Tech for this purpose are saving an average of 15 minutes per RO by putting all of their parts and tire suppliers into one screen, helping reduce the amount of phone calls that a shop has to spend, taking time to do, and getting those right parts and tires fast the first time. So to tee up this session, I want to show you particularly how Parts Tech is partnering with AutoLeap to speed your tire uh, ordering process. We are a seamless integration from AutoLeap, completely free. So just kind of give you an idea here. This is not something um, that is completely disjointed from AutoLeap. We have a seamless integration where you can directly punch out from AutoLeap into Parts Tech once you find what you need. You can submit the order back into AutoLeap and beyond with your day. So I'm going to briefly show you here what we're specifically doing around tires as a way of setting up Kevin's discussion here. I'm going to jump in to Parts Tech. Real quickly here, we are a parts and tires lookup. So you we bring in your information directly from AutoLeap, your vehicle information here in the top right-hand corner. You start looking for, in this case, a disc brake pad set. We then go and query across all of your suppliers, providing search results in one screen. We provide that same experience with tires. So you come in here, put in your tire size, and then we query against all of the tire suppliers that you have connected through Parts Tech, enabling you to search inventory, pricing, and availability across all of your tire suppliers in one screen. Currently, we have over 50 tire suppliers for you to be able to connect to, as well as of those 50, we have more than 30 that are available for you to connect to absolutely free. We do have, as you can see here, ATD, NTW, US Auto Force, Tire Hub, to name a few, but ATD, US Auto Force, and NTW are part of our premium package, very popular tire suppliers that we find a lot of uh, shops want to connect to. Provide very easy ways for you to monitor and show pricing to your customers around tires. You can set up tire packages within Parts Tech and switch between different tire pricing packages to quickly give your customers an idea of what the out-the-door price would be in the event that they're in the shop with you and debating what would be best. If they are not in the shop with you, once you've set up your tire package, you can simply start selecting various tires here to add to a quote. And then I'm gonna select three here and hit review quote. Now I've got a good, better, best tire comparison quote across these three options that I can very easily text or email a customer who may not be in the shop or across the counter from you. So these are just some ways that Parts Tech is partnering with AutoLeap to help with your tire ordering process. It is now my privilege to introduce Kevin, Bot, the Executive Council Member at Elite Worldwide. Kevin, I will turn it over to you. Thanks, John. This looks really great. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed by the, uh, the all the tire manufacturers and distributors you've got up there. That looks great. Yep. Hi there. My name is Kevin Vaught. Uh, I'm a business development coach and, and a, an Executive Council Member for Elite Worldwide. Uh, I've been in the tire business, connected to the tire business for 40 some years, 42 years. Um, and I've, I've heard all my life uh, as a coach and as a council member now, I hear all my, all my life that uh, you can't make money selling tires. And I just want to uh, go through a short presentation and show you that you can make money selling tires. And especially after seeing John's presentation there uh, with that setup, that makes it even easier. So if you'll bear with me, I'll just continue on. This is the mission statement of Elite. Uh, I don't know how many of you are uh, familiar with Elite, but we live by these, by this principle. Uh, this is our mission statement. A little bit about myself. I had multiple locations in Indianapolis, Indiana for several years. Um, I sold my, I sold a couple of the locations uh, to my my youngest son, who now still operates them. My oldest son works for Michelin, the corporation. 
So that's why I say I've been connected or in the tire business for the several for the last 40 years. I first want to just go through, I'm going to go through some benefits of, of selling tires for us in the tire, I mean, in the, in the auto repair industry. And then I'm going to just uh, go through uh, some, some statistics and facts. And then I'm going to follow that up with showing you how to price tires to where you can compete with the big boys, the big box stores, and still make money selling tires. First of all, it's the right, the benefits of selling tires, it's the right thing to do for a customer. Um, you know, when years ago, we used to send customers uh, you know, if a cu customer came in for tires, we didn't stock tires. We didn't have tires. We sent them down the road to discount tire or one of the other tire companies. Uh, customers, our customers don't want to go two or three places. It's inconvenient to get your car worked on. So it's the right thing to do for us to sell tires. Again, we're not trying, I'm not trying to make you into tire dealers per se, but if we can, if you keep the customer from going elsewhere, that's the key. And I think that's the main thing. Another thing that does is increases the customer visits. Uh, 15, 20 years ago, we were seeing customers a little more than four times a year uh, visits. Uh, today, we're seeing them less than two times a year uh, with the increased uh, mileage intervals on oil changes and such. Um, when, when you sell tires, you've got to see them every 5,000 miles to rotate, rotate tires. So if nothing else, it's a good thing to increase the customer visits. Here, I said this earlier, it keeps customers from going elsewhere. Once we give them an opportunity to go to another to a competitor, they may find they like them better. So you definitely want to keep them from going elsewhere. Uh, today, it takes a minimal investment in equipment. Uh, the biggest um, challenge I see is the phys having the physical space. But the actual equipment itself, it's very it's very inexpensive to get started in this business and in selling tires today. There's little or no inventory cost. As uh, John was just showing you, all the tire distributors uh, about 25 years ago. The tire manufacturers decided that they're going to use distributors to, to distribute tires as opposed to selling tires directly. The main reason for that was the, 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 the number of SKUs in tires increased so much. In 1980, I think there was 276 SKUs. Today, there's over 15,000 different sizes and types of tires. So they're, they're, but today with distributors, you don't have to, you don't have to stock tires. Years ago, we had to stock them. Today, you just call the distributor and they get most places, in the, especially major markets, get delivery three or four times a day. It takes a little less skill and talent. You're not using A-plus technicians, $50 an hour technicians to, to install tires. Electric vehicles need tires and they need lots of tires. Um, the statistics are showing that uh, EV vehicles are wearing tires at twice the rate of uh, the internal bus can engine tires. And the reason for that is because of the extra weight and the, obviously the extra torque with electric vehicles. So uh, electric vehicles are going through tires twice as quick as internal combustion engine vehicles. And another thing about selling tires is customers, when they, you know, we put a water pump on a car, the customer doesn't really notice any difference. It may not be leaking again or whatever the case may be. But when you sell tires on a customer's car, the minute they drive out that lot, they feel the difference. So it's kind of a it's kind of a win win. I came across some interesting stats and facts that I want to I want to I want to talk about. First of all, seventy eight percent of all replacement tires are sold by the first car care professional that informs the customer of the need. So in other words, the the eighty almost eighty percent of the people buy tires from the first person that tells them that they need them. For every dollar of tire sales in any given shop in the United States, the customer will spend an additional dollar fifty in, in added sales. Fifty-seven percent of customer deflections from shops occur from tire sales. That goes back to what I was saying earlier. Um, uh, this is especially true with dealerships. Um, when it comes time to replace tires, that's about the time the dealer loses that customer, and that's why dealers are so. Um, uh, adamant these days about selling tires, they realized they were losing customers. 72% of customers who purchase tires from your shop will return for service. There was a state, there was a saying many years ago in the tire business. If you, if you own the rubber, you own the customer. And that was basically appeals to the statement here. 70% of customers who purchase tires will return for service. 62.5% of all tires sold are sold by independent tire dealers and shops. 23.7 is the average gross profit margin of tires sold in 2022. And I know that doesn't sound like a money, a lot of uh, gross profit when we're talking about some of the stuff that we do is 60 and 70%, but I'm going to show you here how that all ties in in a few minutes. 
uh, 9% of all vehicle crashes are tire related uh, to the tune of two, 622 traffic fatalities in 2021. I think I can't see the screen here, but I think it was 20, yeah, in 2021. Go through a couple more here. Only 19%, this, this, I found this very interesting. Only 19% of customers have properly inflate, inflated tires. 42% of consumers have never checked tire pressure, never. 32% of consumers don't know how to check tire pressure. 44% of consumers have experienced a, a tire blowout. That one surprised me. I never, I've never had a blowout myself, so I didn't realize that was so high. 20% of all roadside emergencies are tire related. The average person will experience five flat tires in their lifetime. Tire blowouts cause 78,000 crashes per year. It goes back to the 9% of all crashes, 622 fatalities in 2021. 220 million flat tires per year in the United States, one every seven seconds. A couple more and I'll be done here. 20% of customers in your shop are driving on potentially unsafe tires, 20%. So that means if you, uh, if you have 100 uh, cars per week in your shop, 20 of those cars are potentially running on un unsafe uh, tires. This is a big one. Vehicle and tire manufacturers on average spend over $3 million to develop tire attributes that enhance the safety and performance of OE, OEM tires and vehicles. In other words, uh, the tire manufacturers spend a great deal of time uh, to match the tire to the vehicle. So that's another reason that makes it kind of easier to get into the tire business, these days, at least in my opinion. Uh, you don't need to be a tire expert. Honestly, uh, to, to, to get them to start with, when a customer comes in and they've got Michelin's on their car, the best thing you can do is replace them with the Michelin's that, are, that came with the car. If it's got good years, the best thing you do is put it with the good years that came with the car. Doesn't mean that, that Michelin may not be a better choice, but understand that that tire was that car and tire were designed together. Today, new car dealers only sell 9% of all replacement tires, but check this out. Their goal is to sell 30% by 2030. And that goes back to what we were saying earlier that the uh, um, the, the, the a lot of deflections from 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 service centers have come because of tires. So dealers understand that now, and they're they're getting on board big time. AAA recently reported that properly inflated tires can save as much as eleven three to eleven cents a gallon on fuel purchases. It's a big spread there, but I guess it depends on what type of vehicle. And this is something that is is really I'm going to go ahead and pull this all the way up. Wet, wet, wet weather tire results. And this is minimally wet weather, light shower uh, at 75, 70 mile an hour stopping distance. When a tire is brand new, 11, 12, 30 seconds is usually what a new tire has. Um, they stop at 195.2 feet. At 430 seconds, 290 feet, almost 100 feet long. It takes almost 100 feet longer to stop the vehicle. And then at 230 seconds, which is is in the in the in our world is considered um, totally worn out it's it's almost 200 feet shorter it stops so my recommendation my recommendation has always been even for years is that you start looking at replacing tires at 430 seconds uh you know like i said at 230 seconds the tires completely wore out but you see the degradation in 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 the tire when it gets to 430 seconds my wife driving a car i certainly want her stopping 100 feet shorter so that's why the tires become so important. This is just, you're gonna, you're all gonna get a copy of this, but this is just another example. Uh, this was a Tandy Engineering Associates did this uh, study. And this is just an example. It shows the car lengths that it takes. And you, you add it up, it's basically the same number I just gave you earlier. But it shows here the tires are good to up through 630 seconds. Um, it, you start thinking about tires at 530 seconds. And then at 330 seconds, they're unsafe. So at, at 2.30 seconds, they're absolutely wore out and unsafe. This here, this is a, this is a tire sales projection worksheet. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I, I kind of borrowed this from, uh, from General Motors. Um, General Motors and Ford, Ford did a little better job. General Motors was a little slower, but they had a very difficult time getting their dealers to um, start selling tires. They just, the, the dealers just not, you know, can't make any money at it. It's too much work. As soon as, I'm just not, we can't do it. So General Motors came up with this projection. And um, I have this worksheet if anyone would want it, but it, you, you simply put the, you input the numbers in the blue boxes and it automatically tells you what that generates. So for example, on this particular one, uh, I think the, the projected need, we talked about that earlier, was 20% of every car that comes in. 
Um, so there, this one here has 300 AR, R, R, ROs that month. And anyway, you can see the calculations comes on down. So this is this is the, the worksheet that General Motors has, de, has designed to get their dealers to understand they can make money selling tires. And, and by the way, this particular thing is just the tire itself, no, ad, no additional services. And this is a fantastic worksheet to tell you whether you can make money at tires. And this is a great example. Uh, if you look over the basic assumptions, this, this, this service job, the service is on the left, the tires are on the right. This particular service job, um, $270, parts $135, labor $135, just did a 50-50 thing real quick. At 50% margin, our gross profit on parts. So the, the total service GP dollars on this particular, this hour job uh, was $150.50, or 56% gross profit, pretty nice gross profit, what we're all shooting for, 50 60%. The tires, uh, we go through the same the same worksheet, and um, that total revenue is eight hundred ten dollars, twenty percent margin on tires, so not a big markup. Um, but then forty dollar per tire installation package. We'll talk about that here in a few minutes. The bottom line is the total gross profit dollars on that job is two hundred sixty seven dollars and fifty cents. The same hour. So, but you see the thirty three percent gross profit. That's what scares people off. Remember, we don't pay we don't pay our bills with percentages. We pay them with dollars. So even though the tires are only 33%, it generates $267 in gross profit dollars, as opposed to the service, which is 56% gross profit, but, but only generate $152 in gross profit dollars. So if you're doing this calculation, again, this like a worksheet that does automatically, you can see that you, you made $115 more that hour in putting on four tires at a minimal amount of profit, you made you made $115 more time than you did doing the service job. And again, the don't get confused by the percentage in the dollars. The, the dollars are what you need to look at. I think this one here is just an, another one. This is a basic assumption, but with alignment. So it's basically the same thing. So now we're at an hour and a half job, basically. Uh, and this is the same thing with that. So with alignment included, and again, these numbers are going to fluctuate by market. But with the, with the alignment included, it's $162 more in gross profit dollars in alignment than it is in part, uh, the, the service. I mean, I'm sorry, in tires than it is in service. Here's some tips for selling tires and I'm gonna show you some tire packages and how we can, how you package stuff. I think that again, uh, John had a great the, the addition to the program that showed how they get, you, you design packages and that's what we're gonna get to here in a few minutes. But some tips for selling more tires. It's just display signage in your shop, restrooms, add it to your add it to your logos to some marketing and advertising. If, as long as you're selling the tires, there's no problem using the, the tire logos. Um, display a tire or two in your, in your waiting area. Just let customers know that you sell them. Again, you don't have to advertise these. It's just let people know that you, that you sell tires. That keeps them from going elsewhere. Another tip you should always, rec you would always, you should always recommend that replacing all four tires. And obviously the reason for that is because uh, uneven wear will cause, for example, you have new tires in the front of a car and, and tires in the back that are four thirty seconds or five thirty seconds. You go make an emergency stop, what's going to happen? The front's going to grip, the back end's going to come around. Same thing other way. If you have them, the, the new tires in the back and the lesser wear tires in the front, you go to put on the brakes, the front slides and the back's coming around again. So it is always a recommendation that and obviously if you get the guy's got four new tires and, and he gets a puncture in one one tire that's you know that's obvious but if a customer comes in and they got their two tires are that are be worn out or below the 432 second mark in our opinion uh, you should always recommend they replace all four tires tires replace needs needs to be excuse me tires need to be replaced if they are 6 years old or older uh, so make sure when we're checking tires that we're always checking the DOT. The uh, DOT numbers are on the back of the tires. And here's an example down there. The DOT, there's the number 2620. That would mean that that tire was produced the 26th week of 2020. So just make sure that you're always looking at that. Even though a tire may not show uh, weather cracking or um, signs of age, they, the, the ozone and the, and the air degrades the tire. So if they're older than five, five uh, six years old, it is recommended that they replace the tires, regardless of the amount of tread. 
educate your customers. Obviously, that's kind of a no brainer there. But train your team to inspect every tire every time. And again, not only inspect the tread depth, and if it's at 430 seconds, again, that's the recommend, recommended time to start talking to a customer, in my opinion. But train your team to inspect every tire. Train them to check the DOT numbers. Simply write down the last four digits DOT and you know whether they're six years old or not, or older. Bundle your installation items into packages. Sell the value. Define why customers should purchase from you. What makes you what makes you special? Uh, again, use social media to inform your tires you sell tires. Not, a, a, not again, not to make the tire deal. Just let the customers know your customers know. Hey, we we can take care of your tires for you. Price match. Um, here's what I said earlier. There's there's a there's a, a saying in the industry: you own the rubber, you own the customer. Um, I've I'll show you here in a few minutes that you can sell tires at zero zero markup and still make money. I'm going to show you that here in just a few minutes. So don't be don't be afraid to match a match a uh, uh, a competitor on their tire pricing. I promise it's worth it. If you if you're worried about the the dollars that it costs you to match that deal, just think of it as marketing, because you're going to get that customer back if you take good care of them. Sell the visit, not the tire. In other words, uh, uh, tires the people consumer thinks of a tire as a commodity. It's round and black. In their eyes, it's round and black. So we, we've got to give them a reason to buy the tire from us. Why should they buy it? Why should they buy that round rubber, round black thing from us instead of the person down the street? Well, again, if we're selling to our existing customer base, you've already got a head start. You've already started build, building that relationship. That relationship has already started to be built and, and built upon. So you've already got a head start, in my opinion. This is the five steps to a tire sale. This is something that's been going on for um, as long as I've been in the industry. I mean, I think this started in the 40s, quite frankly. Um, but this was, this you know, if you talk to anyone that is in the tire business, they always say, tell me the five steps to a tire sale. And this is basically the five steps. You know, a friendly greeting, analyze the customer's needs. Uh, you show the recommended tire to the customer. Explain the features and benefits. Remember, uh, customers, they want to know what's in it for them. Why should I buy this tire? What's going to make it better? And, and then ask for the sale. You know, we can have those installed to, in, in your car in about 45 minutes. Again, that's not quite as easy as it used to be because we don't have those tires in stock. So pretty much now it's going to be, um, you know, we get the tires from the distributor. They'll be here this afternoon or, you know, we need, need a couple hours. But the bottom line, you have to ask for the sale. Okay. And here's some ways that I want to show you that you can compete with the big boys in selling tires. Let me throw you th three examples here. Um, this particular uh, uh, client used this silver, gold, platinum. You can use one, two, or three. Uh, you can use whatever you want. But um, as John said, you can build these from his program. You can build it right into the program, your different packages. This particular package is just kind of an entry-level package. It includes preparation tire installation, uh, TPS, um, inspection, uh, computer uh, lifetime computer, uh, computer spin balance, tire disposal fee, free lifetime tire rotation, and free lifetime flat repairs. So you sell this as a package. At, and the, remember, these numbers are going to be, you have to make up your own market numbers for whatever that fits your market. But for example, this is $34.99 a tire. So, so basically, instead of having all these separate line items on the invoice, install tires, install tires, TPMS inspection, uh, computer spin balance, instead of having all these separate line items, just build a package, a tire installation package, tire service package. And that's what that's what this, this, this is all about. So you start, you, we got good, better, best. I think today I would probably just use two, but uh, whatever works in your market. But I think it might, like I said, I think today I would probably just use two. And the, the next one is the gold. The difference between the gold package and the and the um, silver package. In this instance, remember, you can build these however you like to build them. But in this instance, the difference is, is that, <clears throat> excuse me, this includes a 24-month road hazard protection. And again, you can make these changes any way you want. The, 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 the premise behind all this is to sell the package, sell the value. Uh, this is exactly what, um, a discount tire does exactly what um, some of the bigger tire uh, retailers do, but they don't do as good a job as this. And what I mean by that is they'll package a couple things together. They won't package it all together. I'm saying just package it all together. Make a price that works for you, package it all together, and sell it as a package. 
And then the platinum is basically the same thing as the gold, but the difference is it has nitrogen fill as opposed to air fill. I'm going to say if there's any questions on that, we're going to take questions at the end. So I'll wait till we get there. But at any rate, this is this is the way to price your tire. So uh, using that worksheet I showed you earlier, I'll go back to it. Using this worksheet here, using this worksheet, you can you can put in anything. You, you can put zero dollars for the tire and see how it comes out. But if you know, just in real quick math, if you did if you if you did zero dollars in tires and you did a gold installation package, you're going to get uh, what is it, forty five dollars of tires for one hundred and eighty dollars, uh, one hundred and eighty dollars in gross profit dollars just for the installation package. So again, this worksheet does a great job of just. Putting it in there, you can see hey, if, I, if I mark my tire up, $10 a tire. Again, I'm not advocating any way of doing this. I'm just showing that you can still make money at tires without having a big markup on the tire itself. That's what's going to make you competitive. You can't be, you know, studies have shown that we can be uh, any any shop, any any uh, retailer can be up to 25% higher than their, their competition if they're providing the value to go along with that. And so when you start providing um, free flat repairs for the life of the car. And that sounds like kind of a pain, and it's really not. But if you if you do free flat repairs, free tire rotation, free uh, lifetime computer spin balance, the secret there is you're getting that customer back every 5,000 miles. And guess what? You're getting the tires and wheels off that car. When you get the tires and wheels off a car, you're exposed to all the brakes, suspension. You can't do that. You could We couldn't do that. The oil changes very easily. I mean, if you get a, bring a car in for an oil change, you start pulling the tires off, check the brakes, customer flip out, right? Well, this way, they're, they're, they come back to get the tires rotated. It's just part of the package. They're going to get the tires rotated. It's going to charge them a dime. It takes us five minutes, 10 minutes. It doesn't take very long. I guess it takes a little longer than that stuff to wreck and put them up, but it doesn't take a long time. The, but the biggest thing is you got the customer back in your shop for a visit, and you've got those tires and wheels off that car for a full inspection. That's the biggest bonus of the, the free tire rotation. I, told, I, I, I tell clients all the time, I would never charge for a tire rotation, period. Because what what better opportunity do you have? I know that we, we still have to pay our techs to do it, and that's fine. But what better opportunity do you have? You got the car in front of you with all the tires and wheels off of it. It's just, it, to me, it just it makes a lot of sense just to absolutely um, offer a free rotation. So another thing about tires, is that, uh, at least what I found, is I was having trouble getting my advisors years ago to set the next appointment. Well, you know, back then it was a little tougher back then too because it oil change was at 3,000 mile intervals. And it, But today we, we we very simply do it. We'll see it every six months. We just, when they, when a customer leaves, we just make them a point for six months from today. And the customer will say, well, I'm not sure I'm going to need service by then. May not, but you definitely need your tires rotated by then. So that's another way of getting the customer back in every six months. You've got the pre-appointment set. They won't go anywhere else. Again, it goes back to that. Uh, once you take care of that customer and their tires, you will have that customer for life if you do a good job with it. Next steps. Uh, if, once you do that, I, what I would do first is fill out the, uh, the the sales projection worksheet and see what your opportunities are. You may not have enough opportunities to be even worth doing it. Uh, but the first thing to do is start with that. See if, See if there is any potential there. Next, next, what I would do is see, see what equipment needs are. I talked to a guy last week. I did a presentation on this a couple of weeks ago, and the guy said that he bought all of his tire equipment, nice balancer, nice changer, used for less than $5,000. So it's a very low cost of entry. Subscribe to the tire trade magazines. And again, you can do all this stuff be before and if you, you make the decision whether you want to sell tires or not. The three big ones are Modern Tire Review, uh, I mean, modern tire dealer, tire review, and tire business. Those are the three big ones. I'm sure there's others out there, but these are like the, the three big ones that we in the industry always read. Interview and select vendor or supplier. Uh, John was showing you earlier that uh, ATD, uh, Tire Hub, and NTW are probably the largest. Uh, obviously, Tire Rack's in there, and uh, all US, all the four. So there's, there's several distributors. The key is to find a distributor in your market that'll make at least daily deliveries and hopefully will in the larger markets they're making two and three times a day deliveries and by doing that you don't have to have inventory um back in 19 
uh, just as, as, as late as 1997, 1998, it wasn't uncommon to stock $150,000, $200,000 worth of tires in, 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 in our shop. Um, because that's you, you ha we had to buy them to get the discounts. We had, well, that's not the way it is today. It they're basically everyone's, everyone's on a similar playing field. Do do bigger pe uh, dealers buy cheaper? Absolutely, they absolutely do get a better deal uh, because they buy more. But that being said, you can still be competitive if you're willing to take a little less margin in the tire and build it in the value of the installation and service package. Um, develop a training program. And again, I, I, uh, the tire, whatever distributor you sign up with, by the way, they will offer training. They will offer, um, uh, they will help you with signings. If you, I'm not, I'm again, I'm not talking about signing up the whole building, but they'll offer you signings for inside your store, the brochures. They offer a lot of, um, um, uh, added things to help you sell tires. So if you want a training, if you want to get training for your uh, your advisors, for example, they'll come into your store and they'll do a training session on tires and go through the, and go through the the, the steps of, of you know good, better, best, and the the quality of this tire, why it's better. They'll go through all those steps. Again, if I was starting out just today, I would simply replace what's on the car that comes in. That, that's providing that you know this is their first set of tires. I would have, that would be my that would be my first recommendation because then I don't have to learn how to sell tires right now. I just simply were you happy with the tires you got on there? The manufacturer worked hard to make those tires make, fit your car, not only fit your car but make the performance of your car proper. Let's just go back with those. So that's what I would do. The biggest training I think with the uh, team members today is get them to to fully inspect them, make sure that they they've, they've all got a tread depth gauge and their tread depth in those tires. And when they start, like I said, they start getting the five. Five thirty seconds, four thirty seconds. You need to start having a conversation with that customer, your customer, and let them know that 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 tire is not stopping like it did at one, like it did when it was brand new, and that degradation has fallen off. And quite frankly, in my opinion, and most people in the tire industry's opinion, four thirty seconds is wore out, not two. And the the statistics kind of bear that same that same philosophy there. Okay, I want to take some questions and, and then we can expand on some of these things. If anyone has any questions, we have any questions there, Ocean? No, there are no questions right now. No questions. Okay. <laughs> That's a good thing. That means you're expanding everything really well. Well, I went too fast then if there's no questions. How's that? I want to make sure I did it. I had enough time. <laughs> What I what I will do is I will I can go back through this. So let's do this. Let's go back through this. Just I get a little mm -hmm. bit of time. Let's let's go back through this. I'm gonna put some glasses on so I can see it a little better. But let's go back through this exact this exact um, service calculator. Oh, let's go back one more. Let's go to the, the 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 projection sheet first. This particular this particular one is that like I said, twenty percent is what we we think they need. This is a monthly basis. This particular customer has three hundred ROs a month, uh, so that means it's 60, 20 percent of that it needs needs tires. Closing ratio on tire sales eighty percent. Uh, again, that was 78% was the number, but we say 80%. Um, so that means that the number of ROs needing tires for 48, number of tires per ROs is four, projected, projected tire sales in units is 192 units that month on 300 cars. The average tire sale price, and again, these are just not, these numbers don't really mean anything. I mean, what I mean is uh, every market's going to be different. But on this particular example, the average tire sales price was $130. Uh, the tire sales, the total revenue for the the, the 192 tires would be twenty four thousand dollars, and this on this particular example they only made fifteen dollars a tire. So they, they this, it wasn't like setting marking it up twenty percent or forty percent. It was simply fifteen dollars a tire. So the gross profit on the tires was twenty eight hundred dollars and eight twenty eight twenty nine hundred dollars roughly. So then the service installation package again they they were very conservative. They just said forty dollars forty dollars a, a, a tire. So the installation package is seventy six hundred dollars. Uh, so the gross profit uh, on, on labor sixty five percent. So we're taking the labor out of there, uh, the cost of the labor to do the job, and then alignment opportunities eighty percent is thirty eight point four. By the way, uh, if you have an alignment machine, obviously if you sell tires, you always offer a free alignment check. Uh, again, that takes it takes very little time, but. Uh, I think that this the statistics that we've seen is about eight out of ten when you check them on the machine it needs needs some sort of adjustment in alignment. 
usually people don't want to, they don't want to put new tires on, spend thousand dollars in tires uh, for tires and have a bad have alignment issue. So, and that's another um, great sale there. So anyway, alignment opportunities, $38. And this is alignment price, $100. Again, I know that number is not even close to what it is, but that was just the examples they are used. And again, you can input any numbers you want in these blue boxes. It automatically calculates. So the revenue from alignments is $4,000, <clears> excuse me, $4,000. So the, the total gross profit on the, uh, again, on the alignments, we're taking, the, we're taking our cost of labor out of there is $2,900. The bottom line you see down there is $10,000 extra a month in gross profit dollars. And that's not, that's not even bringing any more cars in. That's simply doing a better job at the cars that we got coming in and making sure we're checking the cars and we're, and we're, and we're checking and we're, and we're checking the tires properly. So that's an extra $10,000. That's what is that? 120, you know, whether it is $124,000 a year in added gross profit dollars. Again, overall, you're going to look at your gross profit percentage. And if you've been, if you're a total service shop and you've been averaging 60% gross profit, you start selling tires to any great number, that number, that percentage is going to come down some, but the gross profit dollars are going to be higher. That's just don't just keep that. Always keep that in mind. It's about gross profit dollars, not the percentage. We'll go to the next one, spend a little bit more time with it. This is the tire service calculator. And again, you, you in the blue box, you see we put the labor hour for the shop was 135. Uh, the average, uh, the um, hourly rate for that technician is 40. So then you see the calculations below that. This particular job comes up to $152 in gross profit dollars or 56%. Again, 56% is right where we want to be. But if we take that over to the tire side, we got the tires, and this is at a 20% markup. Again, you, you could put $5 a tire, $10 a tire, you don't have to put percentage. But at 20% markup, and then putting the installation package average of $40, you can see it goes through there. The, the tire, the technician, instead of being $40, this is done with an $18 an hour tech. That may be low today as well. But still, you can see the difference in, in the in the in the level of expertise needed to do, to do the work. So the total labor loading cost on this tech, uh, the tire tech, is twenty two fifty, as opposed to the service tech being loaded is fifty dollars an hour. And that's why I say let, it takes a little less talent to do it. Again, goes through the calculations. It's only thirty three percent gross profit, but it's two hundred sixty seven dollars and fifty cents gross profit dollars. So comparing those two exact jobs. Hour worth of service on the right side just serves hour for the to put to install tires uh, and the installation package on the right side. It's $115 additional in gross profit dollars. The next one is is simply the same thing but has alignment added to it. And again, I think the alignment here is priced at maybe $100. Oh, $135. So it's a little bit more realistic here, the alignment price. The bottom line doing the exact same calculations. It's ever this an hour and a half. So instead of uh, $50 an hour, it's $75 for the hourly cost over here. Instead of, uh, was it $22? It's $33 for the hourly cost. So I mean, I mean, I'm, we're building the cost in there and it's still coming up. You're making more gross profit dollars on the tires than you are the service. I'm not telling you sell tires instead of service. Please don't misunderstand. But I'm just saying this is a great addition to what you already have. You already got the cars coming in. So why not make this an offer? Why not check them? Why not, uh, you know, try to sell the customer their tires instead of letting them go to discount or down the street? Host, any questions yet? No questions yet, Kevin. Well, that either means I did a good job or a poor job. I'm not sure which one it I is. I think you did a very good <laughs> job because even I understood the math. And okay. I'm not good at math. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, the main thing that I wanted to stress, and like I said, I hear it every single day with, with clients. I hear it every single day. Kevin, I don't sell tires. I send the discounter. I send them down the street. I don't, I can't make any money. It's a hassle. Well, it's really not. It's, it's very, very simple. And like I said, you make, make money at it. That's the greatest thing. You can make money at it. Yeah. It was a great session. Thank you so much, Kevin. And for everybody who's listening in, oh, we got a question. Let's see. Um, so Heather asked if she can get her hands on these calculators. She certainly can. And I'm going to get to that here in just a second. Perfect. There we go. If you, if, 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 if you will scan this, uh, you will get a, um, a copy of the presentation and then, uh, I will make sure that you, that, that you also get a copy of the calculators, the, the, the two worksheets, the, the first worksheet about the potential and then the worksheet about the, showing the difference between service and, and repair. 
so yes, I certainly will get that to everyone or we will get that to everyone, however this works out. I'm not in charge of that, but I'll make sure everyone gets it. How's that? Yeah, perfect. We can also share them with them. That's perfect. Great. Thank you Super. so much for this, Kevin. The session was amazing. It was a pleasure talking to you. Hope you have a great day and you can get back to Thank your golf you. now. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I hope I hope that the, the caffeine keeps you going. Over. Yeah, you. it will. It has to. <laughs> pleasure meeting you guys. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of Amplify. Stick around for the after party. Bye, guys. Thank you.